Okay, so before we get started onto the actual calculations that you will need to know how to do for the lab practical, uh, let's talk a little bit about error. Um, so remember back to Chem 110 when we talked about what has the greatest error when measuring. So, for example, if we're trying to find a volume, keep in mind that what we're talking about with error is going to be determined by the diameter of our cylinder. So for example if we have, let's say this is a beaker and let's say this is a uh, pipette, then which one has a smaller diameter? Well obviously the pipette will have a much more accurate reading due to that smaller diameter. And now what are some errors that you might encounter when reading uh, a glassware? So if you're looking at it from the side that's an eyeball. So you have to be on the same plane as it. If you look at it from up here, what you will likely see is a little bit of a higher or lower reading um, because of the refraction of light through the glass or because of simply where the um, where you see the the line of the meniscus. Um, so those are, yeah, and you can also, you know, not fill it up uh, or fill it up a little too much. So those are all errors that, that you can come across. Um, you can also have calibration errors uh, and that, and you can also accidentally spill some during the experiment or while transferring, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you will need to know a lot of terms for this test, but most of them, if you've been paying attention, you should know. Uh, I'll give you guys some examples like how about a weak base um, and let's say uh, how about like an oxidizing agent, a buffer, etc etc I would just go through the lab and make sure that you know a lot of these general um, definitions so equivalence point um, etc etc alright so now we can get on to the lab <laughs> 